What's going on everybody, Jacob here, Miami Dolphin Syndicate. Before we get into the video, we will not be going live for our preview for the Denver Broncos game today. We'll be going live tomorrow, it'll just be, be just me. However, I will be joined by Gage from Denver Broncos Syndicate. So Gage, thank you for, for coming over and we'll be talking with us. Kind of similar how we had our boy Manon on for the Chargers game. A Chargers fan, talk about the Chargers. We want to have a Broncos fan, a fan who actually runs a channel within our conglomerate of channels. Our syndicate of channels, I guess you could say. Uh, so look if, look out for that. That'll be tomorrow, probably around the same time as usual. Uh, that is still to be determined, but not tonight. Tomorrow, live stream. Uh, okay, now we get right into what we're talking about here today, and that is the injuries. So the Dolphins have quite a few injuries that are, are stacking up, and stacking up at key positions with key players. Torn Armstead, Jalen Phillips obviously missed the game on Sunday against the Patriots, but also in that game, uh, Jalen Waddle and Savon Ahmed picked up injuries. Uh, concussion for Jalen Waddle groin injury for Ahmed and the back issue still lingering with Phillips the ankle injury still lingering over with Armstead and that leaves us on a point going into this game against the Broncos and decisions have to be made as to what we should do or the team should do with these star players going into the game uh, against the Broncos and there's a few philosophies around it with, with Waddle it's a little bit more cut and dry there the NFL has a standardized concussion protocol that he has to go through which he is currently in so if he's able to pass through that then okay fine start them because this is standardized tests for every single team now how good are those tests because you know we all know what happened last year with Tua and I imagine because of the severity of what happened last year they're going to be more cautious with, with Waddle they don't want a 2.0 of oh he might have a concussion might not he's out in the game oh okay it just got a lot worse they, they, they don't want that at hand the NFL doesn't want that at hand so there's a there's a good chance that they're going to be a little more stern when it comes to approving Jalen Waddle but all four of those guys, I would, I would err on the side of caution when it comes to bringing these guys back for the game on Sunday. We are in a position now where we went two and zero on the road, two most difficult games on the schedule, and now playing a Broncos team, which I'm not saying should be overlooked, uh, but I'm definitely saying we should be easily favored going into this game. Uh, last time we played the Denver Broncos was actually back in 2020 with a certain Vic Fangio at head coach and. I mean, his defense ate us alive. Tua had like one good drive in the beginning. We saw Fitzpatrick come in at the end and nearly win us the game. Fell just short. Uh, but with that, uh, we're going to be playing, playing them for the first time in a few years. And they the two teams have definitely, definitely seen a lot of changes. Obviously, with the quarterback position over in Denver, personnel change uh, rollover. I think it was Drew Locke at, uh, at the quarterback position at the time for them. And then for us, like Tua is still here, but the personnel around him is so incredibly different. Uh, you have Jalen Waddle now, you have Tyreek Hill as opposed to Devontae Parker, Mike isicki has gone, Brian Flores is gone, Mike McDaniel in. It's such a different time, and the team for the Dolphins is so much better that I look at this matchup, like, even without Jalen Waddle, without Toron Armstead, without Savon Ahmed, without Jalen Phillips, we should be able to win this game. Now, the, the, the update on both the two guys that missed the game on Sunday in Phillips and Armstead was that... If they needed to have gone, they could have gone. So that probably means something along the lines of if this was week 16 and 17 and we're fighting for the AFC East Championship or we're fighting for a divisional crown or we're fighting for even the number one seat, if that was the case, if those were the circumstances, then likely it would have been that those two would have muscled it out and played. That being not the case, uh, more of a, a, a game that, you know, you can, you, can, you can lose that game to New England and still possibly even win the division still possibly end up with the number one seed in the AFC. Uh, that, that is not a make-or-break moment after we've seen the talent that we can put on the field, the game that we can play against a very good team in the Chargers. We know that we expect to lose a divisional game at some point, so losing that game to the Patriots would not have been a backbreaker. Now that you came out of that with the win, and you're going in against a, chart, or sorry, a Broncos team where whether it's full strength, whether it's 50%, you know, this should be a team that we can handle. Like, and, and again, I don't want to overlook because it's so easy to look past a team that's struggling. You know, they had that hot start last week, sucked in the middle of the game, and then they had that last crazy drive where they nearly came down and won it. Last two drives where they where they nearly came back and won it. So they, they shouldn't be completely overlooked. They still have talent on that team. Sean Payton's a great head coach who once said that two is going to be replaced by Teddy Bridgewater. That should be fun if uh, two ends up going out there and lighting him up because their defense has regressed uh, the Broncos over the first few weeks. They... they on paper, have one of the best defenses in football, and they didn't look too great against the Commanders, which, you know, to be fair, the Commanders have decent offensive personnel, but the defense is not as good as it should be. So 
the the guys that will be going out there on the offensive side of the ball in place of the potential potential injury guys I'm not that concerned about the obviously it's a pretty big difference between the the talent of like say Jalen Waddle and Braxton Berrios and River Craycraft and Erica Zukama like obviously there's there's a big gap when it comes to that but the things that we've seen from those guys so far this season leads me to believe that they're more than capable of filling in a role. Braxton Berrios seems to have a really good connection with Tua. Uh, Mike Mediano seems like he just really wants to get Eric Azucama involved in the offense. It'd be a very different role than what we see from Jalen Waddle, but he just wants to get him involved on the offensive side of the ball. And then in the ground game, Devon A-Chain, it'll be a time to get to see what he looks like since Savon Ackman might not go. With a groin injury, especially those, those soft tissue injuries, those, those muscle injuries, like you, you want to be really careful because they can linger. Like hamstring, groin, calf, you know, you, you just slightly re-aggravate it, and boom, you're right back to where you were when you initially injured it. It, it really sucks. So I think it's an opportunity to see some other guys flourish. We saw last week Andrew Van Ginkle was an absolute stud coming off the edge instead of Jalen Phillips. Uh, we've seen Kendall Lamb perform very well at left tackle. Some of this is their, their ability as players. Some of this is also coaching. That the I think Mike McDaniel has really learned how to scheme better on offense. There were some def- definite question marks last year about play calling and, and stuff like that. But with his play calling and, and coaching ability on the offensive side and Vic Fangio on the defensive side, it seems that we can afford to replace players and put them put the replacements in a position to get as much out of them as humanly possible. And we've seen that already so far, again, with Kendall Lamb and Andrew Van Ginkle. Now we could see it with uh, Braxton Berrios, Eric Azucama, uh, Devon A. Chain step up. Chris uh, Chris Brooks step up. There, there's people in line that can step up. So I'm not saying just flat out be like, okay, yep, they're done this week. But you go into you go into Saturday, you go into Sunday morning, and you're still a little wary. I just think it might be a, a good idea to say, hey, look, we've already built so much positivity. We already have one star coming back from injury in a few months. Let's not let's not push these injuries down the road and keep forcing guys to, to go out there and potentially re-injure themselves and potentially you know bring up a season-ending injury. That would be the worst-case scenario right now. So much positivity around the team. Uh, two wins on the road. Two of the most difficult games on the schedule. So you, you, want, you, want to limit, you want to limit that. And part of that would be potentially to, to let the guys rest that have sustained injuries. What would you do? Let me know down below. Again, we will not be doing the live stream today. It is going to be tomorrow with Gage from Denver Broncos Syndicate. So if you're intrigued in that, look out for that stream tomorrow. We'll be going live, uh, doing a preview for the Broncos games that Broncos game that I was just talking about. Uh, but that is it for me. Make sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, get down in the comments. Make sure to have a great rest of your day. Take care, everybody.